And we back. We back. Like we never left. Because we didn't leave. This lighting is horrible. Hold on. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. Let me fix this. It's still horrible. Can't fix it because it's one-sided. And it's gloomy outside. So y'all can't even see the real light. Oh, well. We back, y'all. I know I was. I didn't go live this weekend. Which is fine. I'm still debating on what times I'm going to start going live on the weekends. If I'm even going live on the weekends. Because that's my off days. But where everybody at today? Last time we was on live, we had Mexico, Texas, Jersey. We had everybody up in the building. And now we got some new people in the building. And for all y'all that don't know who I am, my name is Coach Brian, holistic wellness and weight loss specialist. You come on the live, you ask a question, you get your answer, and we go to the next question. That's how we do it. That's how it's been done. That's how it's going to be. All my familiar faces, I only seen two so far. How y'all doing on today? But hey, this is where the fun starts. We got Ohio in the building. All right, cool. This is where the fun starts, y'all. This is where everything got. Like, I've been, I've been thriving. I can't even begin to tell y'all how amazing social media has been for me again because y'all already know I had quit TikTok. I was like, yeah, it's too toxic over there for me. But Connecticut in the building, I see y'all. What's going on, Jen? Um, but yeah, it was a little too toxic for me. So I had to, you know, I had to pull, I had to pull it back. Tampa in the building, all right. Texas in the building, y'all right there by me. Yeah, I had to pull it back. Came to Instagram, got some loving from Instagram, and it's lit. It's just lit, lit. I need to lose these saggy arms by summer. Please help. Well, you got a lot of time. You got a lot of time. One thing I'll tell you to do is, if you haven't already, go on a caloric maintenance for about two weeks. Get your macros, even if you got to get them from me. It don't matter. I'll, I'll help you. I ain't even going to charge you for that. But get your macros, figure out how many grams of protein, carbs, and fats you're going to be eating for the next two weeks. Get on the disciplinary uh, process, figure out your routine, and then you want to make sure that you're doing any type of resistance training that you can do. If you want to target strictly that area, that's fine, but work the full body to get better results and get you some pumpkin seed oil. Rub yourself down. It helps tighten the skin. It helps firm the skin a little bit more. Get in the sauna box. Not only is it going to flush you out lymphatically, but it helps tighten the skin as well. And then after those two weeks of maintenance, you can start going into a deficit, especially if you're going to be in the process of losing weight and things of that nature. Or you can just stay in the maintenance or do a body recomp and just build a muscle in that place to where it doesn't have to be saggy. You know, but if anybody has any form of um, saggy skin, whether it be breasts, anything of that nature, especially whenever you're coming out of the shower, this is for my ladies. Well, it's for my people that have breasts. Um, whenever you're coming out of the shower hot like i'm talking like a hot 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 shower hot hot bath get some pumpkin seed oil virgin pumpkin seed oil or as organic as you can find it and rub it upward you want to rub it up and you're gonna that's gonna just watch it helps with stretch marks it helps with skin retention it helps with circulation it's really really good your pores are wide open so it goes straight to the blood but that's a really good starter question welcome back to another live y'all welcome back to another live with coach brian i'm located in southern louisiana that's where i'm at but welcome back to another uh live with brian y'all and i'm just once again, just grateful to be here on this Monday. I know it's slow. I know Mondays could be... Oh, it's Cali in the building. That's what I'm talking about. I know Mondays could be a little slow. I know, you know, I have to go to work. I'm at work. I'm ready to get off of work. I know, but look, come come on over here and get you some sunshine. It's raining over here. It's gloomy. That's why my camera looked like this. Like the, I got my ring light right here, but eh, yeah. I'm answering emails and stuff, as y'all can see. But, you know, come get this sunshine. I don't have a gallbladder and can't have a bowel movement. So my okay, if you want to get this person on live, we can. So I'm gonna start asking some questions. If not, we could uh you can slide my DMs. Any questions y'all ask me in my direct messages, I'll answer them. But my question to you is when is the last time you had a bowel movement and when did your gallbladder get removed? Or why? What's going on, Sandra Sebi in the building? One of my favorites. Let me let me wave if you haven't waved at y'all. What's going on? That's one of my clients, y'all. She's she is Truly one of the lights in the world. I'll say that. She is a delightful client. Good to see you, Shay. Good to see you. I'm up in here answering some holistic questions. So anything people want to know about, whether it be wellness, health, things of that nature, that's what we're doing. Um, Last we left off, let's see. The video, 1992, it was removed. So now, okay, let's put it in context. I know you've had a bowel movement since 1992 because your initial statement was, I don't have a gallbladder. I can't have a bowel movement. Please help me understand when the last time you had a bowel movement and uh, how frequently or infrequently have you been having uh, your bowel movement so we can kind of move forward with that. Because, look, I hope, I hope that you ain't been holding in no doggone uh, doodle butter since 1992. <laughs> Y'all, what's wrong with me? <laughs> what is wrong with me? <laughs> but that's, that's my question to you as I answer this lady about... Okay, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. Let me scroll up. 
Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. PA, what's PA? What state is that? Pennsylvania? Yes. I mean, I don't have them regularly. Okay, so how irregular are you? And Chaos, I think that's how you name it. I'm going to get to your, uh, your, um, your question soon. But uh, how... <laughs> I know if y'all came in at a weird time, look, I determined how y'all be using this while if y'all came in at a weird time, just, just hold on. It's, it get it gets better. But, um, how infrequent are the, are the Bible? Movies? I mean, that's expected, but how, how infrequent are, is that? That's what I want to know because I'm going to, I'll tell you this when it comes down to not even, even if they've taken it out, gallbladder inflammation or just the cycles of gallbladders in general. Um, it's we have to understand that the gallbladder has a lot to do with the bowel secretion and has a lot to do with the liver function. The liver is the biggest one of the biggest ones that we have inside of our body and it is in charge of a lot, if not mostly all, of the detoxification that goes on throughout the blood system, throughout the stomach. The liver has to be in communication in conjunction with almost everything within the body to get flushed out. So you wanna get on milk thistle, you wanna get on barberry, you wanna get on um wild yam, you can get on dandelion for sure, uh, and you can get on black root. But also I'll say this before you try to get um before you try to go get those herbs, I'll say try to make sure that you can get as many as you can in tea form or tincture form because it'll just be better because it hits the blood a lot faster. It hits the bloodstream a lot faster. It goes through the system a lot better. And then it also helps with liver function as well, because anytime you've removed something and you have instances where some people's stuff has grown back, that's a whole nother topic for another day. But in these, in this particular situation, now you're really in charge and now you're really responsible for aiding your liver liver in that bile secretion in that bile level of production i mean it's going to do what it can do what it has to do x y and z but why not give it some help also make sure that you're eating a lot of things that don't put a lot of stress within your liver and your body you know stay away from all the saturated saturated and trans fats you want to make sure that you're eating a lot of meat if you're going to eat meat a lot of lean meat 80% 80% fruits and vegetables, 20% meat, also depending on your diet. But 80% fruits and vegetables, 20% meat is typically what I tell a lot of people that have liver problems. And you have to fruit fast. Fruit juice fast. Let me be correct. You have to fruit juice fast. At least three days. Like, let that be a part of your routine to where you can actually get your liver and get your body and your lymphatic system pumping. It doesn't have to, like, because you got to think about it. Anytime you start taking glands and organs and stuff out of the body, you have to make your body's job a little bit easier. Not saying we could go in and be like, okay, I'm going to press the bowel button that the gallbladder normally does for the, you can't do that. Nobody can do that. But what we can do is re-electrify the body, remineralize the body, enrich the body, feed the body with things that's going to not only send your nutritional level to another level, the word level is just, just tearing me up today, but also your bloodstream and things of that nature. That's really all it is. I don't want you to, to walk around like, what was me and this and the third, blah, blah, blah. You got to think about it. If you're not having frequent bowel movements with and or without a blad, a gallbladder, because it does make a difference. Don't get me wrong. Not only is that a fiber problem, but that's a hydration problem. I oftentimes tell people if you're having severe amounts of constipation or your digestive tract is stagnant in general, and I know about it because I'm AB positive. That's my blood type. Like, just so y'all know I ain't capping. I drink grapefruit juice all day, every day, especially in the morning, and it gets my system going. It helps with the excessive amount of mucus that my body naturally produces because I'm AB type. You know, so if you're having these type of problems, you have to make sure that you're setting yourself up for success. Don't eat late at night. You can drink water, you can drink fruit juice, things of that nature, but don't be eating late at night. When you wake up in the morning, don't eat nothing crazy, no solids, all that grease and all that butter and stuff like that. Get some fruits in your system, get some vegetables in your system, get some fruit juice, water in your system. Focus on liquids before solids so you warm the system up, warm the stomach up, warm the liver and the digestive tract up, and then you'll see how much easier you start having bowel movements. The last thing I want to do, especially if if your pathways are obviously not as open as they need to be, I'm not going to tell you to go get Cascara Sagrada. I'm not going to tell you to go get Slippery Elm. Most people are like, oh, yeah, go get you an herbal laxative, blah, 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 blah. And they work, don't get me wrong. But all you're going to do is convulse the colon in a even – it's no point. It's just no point right now. You just need to make sure that your lube – I hate to use this word like this, but, you know, for lack of better terms, lubricating and, and moisturizing the digestive tract and the colon with really, 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 really high-quality – fruit juice, fruits and vegetables, whole foods, things of that nature. I had, I did a video even in the last slide, but I did a video not so long ago. We talked about the power of whole foods, not the store, but actual whole foods, things that are packed 
with nutrients for the body. The moment you start to do things of that nature and put that inside of your uh, your routine, my God, it change it changes the game. Changes, but beautiful, beautiful question, beautiful question. We gonna keep rolling, y'all. We gonna keep rolling, and no question is a dumb question, y'all. I'm gonna just say that right now. A lot of people be like, "Well, I don't want to ask stupid questions." Ask the question. You don't know until you ask. You know. Let's see. I gotta scroll back up, y'all. Somebody said, "How do you manage?" I'm gonna let me back up. Somebody said, how do you manage detoxing the reproductive system? So it depends. So I oftentimes tell people you cannot go wrong with a good fruit juice cleanse. Y'all heard me just talk about it not too long ago. Anytime, it, whether it be reproductive, whether it be cardiovascular, whether it be digestive, lymphatic, um, uh, um, neurological, it doesn't matter. You Basically, the body is going to naturally detoxify itself and try to push things out. But if you specifically want to target certain areas, yes, you do take certain herbs for it, but the Kickstarter. It's like kind of giving the car a jump a little bit. How you should do it is let me start off with a fast. Most of the problems stem from the gut anyway. Start off with a nice fruit juice fast. You want to get on some ginseng. Or you, or my bad, you want to get on some Siberian. Yeah, get on some Siberian ginseng. You can get on um, salt palmetto. You can get on some red maca. Um, you can get on, what's another one? You can, maybe yeah, you can get on some slippery elm. That'll help too. But more so, oh, dandelion root. Dandelion root and milk thistle. That'll also help out. But most so, you want to focus on what's going within the system to help detoxify the body. Because don't get me wrong. I know we throw around and use the word detox a lot these days. A lot, a lot. But I don't want that to, one, scare somebody or to diminish what it act, what, how we actually should view it, if that makes sense. You know, so I respect the fact that you even acknowledge, like, okay, I'm detox I want to detoxify my reproductive system, X, Y, and Z. But do know that if you have something more specific to ask me, you can message me that if you don't want to put that on here. But that's a very broad way of, that's a very general way, general way of addressing that situation as to post, okay, what exactly needs to be targeted. You know, but I feel as though with the basis that I just gave you, you'll set yourself up for success anytime. That's a great Kickstarter. That's a great way to get the journey going. It's all about starting the journey and keeping it going. You can go a week without a bowel movement. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. If y'all going a week, one whole week without a bowel movement and you're eating every day, especially if you eating a lot every day, that's a problem. Most breath problems, most uh, hygiene smell problems, most problems in general come from, well, stem from and start from fermentation within the gut and our constipation. So if you're eating all of this food and you haven't had a bob, shoot, if I miss one day, I get scared. I get the, the panic light com comes on because it's like you have to understand that your body has those. I don't want to use the word, but it has those processes for a reason. If you find yourself eating a bunch of food and then say, let's say you eat a bunch of food and you're having bowel movements every day, but it's not a reflection of what you're eating. It's little pebbles or it's like it's a little real small. It's not like the full flesh ones and stuff like that. Or you having diarrhea a lot, a lot of signs of indigestion, a lot of signs of constipation, a lot of signs of you're not either you're uh, really low in fiber, but also there's something going on inside of the gut that is not getting the job done. But in your instance, you know, you don't have a um, gallbladder that's removed, which plays a big part in that. But if you're somebody that does have one, because everything I told you before it will get you regular. But if, somebody, if you're somebody that does have one, we talked about dandelion root. We talked about milk thistle. We talked about barberry. We talked about um, um, wild yam, things of that nature. Get that in your system more. And, and don't just get, oh, I'm going to get psyllium husk and I'm going to get fiber and blah, blah, blah. No, source it properly. Fruits and vegetables. Get most of your fiber from there and then worry about the rest of the stuff. You should be having, well, I ain't going to say should because everybody's body is different. I'm going to say one to two just to keep it because me personally, I feel like you should have a, you should have, you should wait to eat in between bowel movements. That's just me because, but granted, I only eat once a day. But anyways, I feel like you should be having at, at least two bowel movements a day, especially if you're eating a lot. If you, if you're not eating a lot, that's different. But if you're eating, I even say a lot regularly. Because the standard West, the standard American diet is a high volume diet, you know, and if you're not at least having two bowel movements a day, that's a problem. That's a really big problem. That's why a lot of my a lot of the people that come with like, oh, I have um, 
They're telling me I have halitosis. They're telling me, oh, I sweat too much and blah, 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 blah. Y'all need them stinging nettles. Y'all need alfalfa. Y'all need stinging nettle root. Y'all need ginkgo biloba, things of that nature. That's And a lot of grapes, too, that's really astringent. That not only cleans your body on a, a topical, not even topical, but like a surface level. It also goes on a deep tissue cellular level. If you really take like the cell, look at the cells of a grape, it's astringent from top to bottom. You ever cut a grape in half and just like look at it, how it looks like little strings and stuff, just touch it. That's that's what it's doing inside the body. It's going through and moving stuff out of the way and scraping stuff like they just work like that. That's just how grapes work. But I say all that to say, you know, you have to make sure that you're eating right and having like if you're not having regular bowel movements, that's a problem. You have and I'll, you know, I'm big on going to get checked. I'll go get you. And that's nothing to get a colonic. Colonics are crazy beneficial source out. Make sure it's some good people. Make sure they're not putting no tap water up your booty because, my God, you'll have more problems leaving than you did, than you did coming up in there. But go get you a colonic. I'm not saying rely on a colonic, but if you that backed up, go get you one. They're very beneficial. They're very holistic. They help you all. They hydrate you from the inside out. People come back with way better skin. Their acne clears up. Their stomach clears up. They're not bloated. They don't suffer with all that cramping. But you didn't hit the reset button, which is great. But don't have a colonic and then go back to do the same thing you was doing not too long ago because that is literally the definition of insanity and you're not going to see any results. Stop chasing that temporary stuff. Stop chasing the stuff that makes you feel good in the moment. Stop chasing them quick fixes. Develop principles that are going to not only enrich your body and help you move forward in the future, but also keep you with a long, long, long life. And it's a lot easier said than done. I understand. This is new to a lot of people. They're not used to it. They don't even know where to start. You got people like me. If you don't want to learn from me, I could send you somewhere else. If you don't want to learn from them, I can give you some books. We we, we could be on social media all day. We could be on on our phones all day. We could be playing games all day, X, Y, and Z. Crack open something that's going to bring us some knowledge to you. Go look up some ways to do it. Y'all be on YouTube. Y'all be on here looking for the next trending thing. But I bet y'all know what's going on with Megan Tory Lanez. I bet y'all know what's going on with everybody else that's in court right now. Figure this stuff out. Ask questions. That's what we're here for. But let's hop on that. Let's hop on that. For real, for real. I don't want to see y'all go out like that. Let's see. Let's see. Scrolling back down. What's going on? How y'all doing? How y'all doing? A lot of hellos up in here. What's happening? Let me see. How frequent do you need to? I just answered that question. I hope you're still up in here. She asked how frequently should we need to use the bathroom every day. You are very good. Thank you so much. I just, you know, I, I read a lot. I take my time. I've been in school for a while. One more certification to go, y'all. One more certification to go. Um, What's a lot of y'all up in here? And once again, y'all can ask any questions that y'all want. I'm just scrolling. It's just showing me everybody that joined, but I'm looking for a question. You eat one today? Yeah, I, I started. Okay, I need to answer this question. Here's why I started eating once a day. So my normal routine is I wake up. I have me some grapefruit juice. About two bottles of grapefruit juice, actually. I go work out, I come back, and I just drink water or more fruit juice until it's time for me to have my meal, which is around 3 or 6 o'clock. And then after that, I'm just going to drink more uh, water. I, I drink water for the rest of the day after that. The reason why I do it is because not only is it easier on my stomach, and I like to do it, but I've noticed the benefits. A lot of people call it intermediate, intermediate fasting and stuff like that. That's cool, whatever you want to call it. Me personally, I don't think I'm not eating. Because I don't view fruit juice as non-food or satiating stuff. Like, I can drink two bottles of that. Like, let me see. This bottle is 16 ounces. So, I drink 32 ounces first thing in the morning. You know, and it's like, to me, I'm full. I'm good. I'm energized. I'm ready to move. And I only like to give my body to do one job at a time. If we're eating, we're eating. If we're excreting, we're excreting. If we're working out, we're working out. I don't like eating right before a workout or, or even, I just don't. Like, it doesn't do well for me. But what I have noticed, the benefits, my energy is up. I'm AB positive. My digestive tract is is, is is horrible. But it's way better now. My mood is better. My sleep is better. I feel good. I run harder. I live harder. I'm in a better mood. My brain is a lot clearer than it was before. And if in this days, what I want to do is just strictly fruit, uh, fruit juice fasting or just fasting in general. I'll do that. But... The reason why I do this is because my body has gotten to a level to where it can absorb on a higher level than it did before. You know, and eventually if you keep flushing out your system and doing it right by your body, yours can do the same. But if my little sensitive digestive tract could handle up and do this, I can only imagine, prime example, O-type uh, blood types. Y'all, y'all keep, I've been saying this before, I'll say it again, y'all keep license plates and y'all be good. You know, so just, that's the reason why I do it. I don't want nobody thinking, oh, well, that's, he's doing it and I should do it because he's doing it. No, that's why I do it. Find your reason for doing it. 
I do it because I understand how the nutrition and how everything works and flows through my body. And that's what works best for me. If that doesn't work best for you, if you don't have the discipline for that, if you don't have the desire or if your body literally can't take it because everybody's different. Y'all know I'm big on preaching about individuality and critical thinking. If you if something does not work for you, it just doesn't work for you. And that's fine. There's plenty more options for you out there. There's so many different types of medicine. There's so many different different types of ways of eating X, Y and Z. Do not feel bad because you're doing a trend or you're doing something because we talked about uh all these detox trends and stuff like that a while ago just because it doesn't work for you or it's not effective doesn't mean that there isn't something for you you know you shouldn't want to go do everything that the crowd is doing that's just my opinion but you know y'all just make sure y'all keep striving for more options we, there's so much life to live y'all there's so many options for us to live a better life take a hold of those things really do let's see I hope you're still in here. I just she another person asked why do I eat just once a day. I just answered that question. You are so good. I'm 73. I need to talk to you. I drink tea every day. Is that wrong? I'm not a writer. I know you. You're fine. You're fine. I don't think I drink tea every day. I don't. It depends. Some people drink it two to three. It, I put I put it this way. I don't think it's bad. I haven't seen any studies saying that it's bad. And I even tell some of my clients to do two to three cups of whatever formula that they need because like. Like with my high blood pressure clients, they're definitely drinking a lot of mistletoe. You know, when it comes down to my uh my not my diabetic, what did I just say high blood high blood yeah. When it comes down to my diabetic clients, they're on a lot of bilberry. You know, so I tell them two three times a day, while also coupling with a higher fruit volume diet X Y and Z. You know, to get them together. But I don't feel like that's a problem because even in other cultures, uh, like prime example Asian cultures and stuff like that, that's a staple to their everyday function you know and nothing's wrong with that it was placed on the planet for us to begin with to be used medicinally and um recreationally you know so let's use it all right and that's the end of those questions good if y'all got any more questions y'all can ask um i'm just gonna start at this point because a lot of people just start listening at this point but once again before i dive into the next topic y'all um my name is coach brian holistic wellness specialist i specialize in wellness and weight loss and detoxification all of those different things and i feel as though we need to start preparing for the next year right now i'm talking like right now a lot of people wait until new year's to start losing weight and do x y and z and blah 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 blah. and i feel like that's the worst time to do it yeah all your friends and everybody we're gonna hold each other accountable and blah 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 yeah that sounds good on paper but when you come down to the real life Y'all couldn't do that before. Y'all schedules wasn't lined up before. And most people have spent all of their money around the holiday time. So everybody's only thinking about working. Everybody's only thinking about getting more money. Everybody's only thinking about putting all of those things together to make sure that they can even survive until February, March, April. And all of the months that's following up is just more months where you have to spend more money if you're going to participate in those holidays. So what I would say is start off with simple disciplinary routines right now. And it's not, it don't have to be nothing hard. Like we talked about a few, uh, few days ago in the last live session. All you got to do is start off by, okay, let's eat a little bit more fruit here. Let's substitute this snack with this. Instead of me eating all of this beef all the dog on time because I don't really need to, let me go to a leaner meat because I don't want to give up meat. Or let me put more vegetables in my, let me, uh, more leafy green vegetables in my diet because I'm a high eat meater. What work? Because I'm a high meat eater. What is a meat? I don't know what I just said. But anyways, <laughs> that's the mindset we should be adopting. These are the things we need to be incorporating within our day-to-day -day lives to make sure that we are definitely being successful for next year because I don't know about y'all, but we did, um, I do this every year with all my clients and all of my social media followers. We have what's called the Spring Equinox Detox. So me personally, I don't, I don't believe in the new year. I don't feel as though it's best to bring in another year in the most cold, desolate, lifeless part of the year. That's my personal belief. I feel as though when spring really comes around, around the spring equinox time, whenever we go into that quarter of the season of life, of the planet, of the rotation, all that type of stuff, that's when we should celebrate life. But that's, we should, that's when the seasons also start to change. So we should follow and detoxify as the seasons change. I always tell people, if you're not doing bi-monthly uh, detoxification periods, do seasonal detoxification periods. So whenever the spring equinox gets here, we already prepared for it. We're going to be prepared for all of the life starting to come back, all of the pollen that's about to be in the air again, all of the wildlife that's about to be moving around, all of the work that's going to probably increase. So the air, the air quality is going to be moving around left and right. 
you should want to detox. You should want to refortify yourself and get ready for the next season that's coming up. And then also, it's not just physical. It's mental and spiritual. A lot of people will tell y'all the mental clarity that comes with it, the better quality of sleep that comes with it, the skin clears up, the money starts coming out of nowhere. Everything starts to get better, immensely better at that. So once again, this is just my personal belief. This is what I choose to do. And it's what my followers, I'm saying followers like I'm a cult leader. This is what the people that like me on Instagram, TikTok, that's what they do with me. I don't like the word followers. I'm not God. But y'all get what I'm saying. It's like, this is what we do every season. And I just would like for y'all to start hopping into that mindset now. I'm not saying you got to switch your beliefs and blah, blah, blah. It ain't even that deep. It's just more so being aware of what's going on around us environmentally. Like we are living in some of the most processed times in human life. And if you feel as though you eating fast food, processed food and being around X, Y, and Z and all these chemicals every day. And I'm not trying to scare nobody. I know it can be very scary because you start omitting a whole bunch of stuff that's bad for you. Like what we got left to eat, what we got left to enjoy. I understand that. I didn't been through that already. But what I'm trying to tell y'all is start to migrate and progressionally. Now I'm even going to use the word heal. Start preparing yourself to go through life as life is going forward because society is changing environments are changing production uh of all prime example and I'm, i don't want to rain on it too long because you know i don't want to bore y'all but i will say i'm gonna get back to the health stuff but i will say this i personally feel as though most of the general population is not in charge of big pop uh pollution i just don't because why are they coming at the people because we could recycle and do everything that we want to which is a good thing i'm not saying stop doing that but how about we just switch to better qualities of product so instead of us eating with all of this metal and X, Y, and Z and, and styrofoam plates and stuff like that, we could switch to hemp. We could uh, switch to bamboo. We can switch to things that are actually biodegradable, easily recyclable. And guess what? We're not in control of that because we don't make it. We don't sell it. We're consumers. So the people that own the businesses, the people that actually put these things out, the people that's actually creating these things, they need to change their sourcing. You know, and it, but that just goes to show this is the stuff we have to prepare for because being that they're not doing that, all we're doing, prime example, they just did a um a landfill not even 20 miles out from my house. And I live in the south in the country. Like, that is one of the worst ideas to me because it's like we had a bad rain a few months ago, I want to say. And most of that stuff, that debris and all of that, it was all in the gutters and the pipeline. Like, it was just bad. Like, that little area, because that area that I'm talking about, it dips bad. So when it floods, all it's doing is just picking up all of that trash and spray. It's so horrible. But if they would have switched to something that's more bio, if the, if the community starts switching to stuff, if the community of producers start switching to things that's more biodegradable, easily accessible, you know, something that has a better quality that can actually be utilized or recycled the right way, we probably wouldn't have these problems, you know? Like, but it's a money thing. It's a, it's a money thing. But I'm, let me get off of this. I don't want my page to be conspiracized and then they flagging me and blah, blah, blah. Because my last page, child, I started talking about this type of stuff and I was I was shadow banned for the longest. But anyways, back to health. We're back to health. Let's talk about the stuff. All right. What's the problem with metal silverware? Please educate me. It's not really that it's a problem per se. I don't know. What, I don't know when you came in, but we were just talking about how consumers, us as consumers, we're not solely responsible for pollution. It's not that it's it's not it's a great invention. We can eat with them. We can wash them, all type of stuff. Great, reusable, all of that. But people still throw these things away. Storms happen. X, Y, and Z pollution happens. But we're not the ones that made them. The people that made them need to start making things that's more biodegradable. And then we start talking about how, you know, that plays into pollution and blah, 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 blah. So you didn't miss much. If you tune in around that time, you, you didn't miss too much of nothing. Let me scroll back up and see if I missed any other questions before I move forward. And if y'all have questions, ask them, y'all. Ask them. Ask them. I have no problem answering y'all questions. Let's see. But I lost a lot of weight and I am the same pets. I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Dun, dun, dun. I hate them little bot pages. They be coming up. Oh, I'm about to block her. I hate them bot pages. You are so true. Thank you so much. Uh, It's just, you know, I like to look at life very constructively and real, you know. How do we get started? It depends. It depends on what you're asking to get started with. But I'll say this. In the grand, if we're going to talk about health, if we're going to talk about wellness, here's how you get started. I oftentimes tell people, really start logging down what you eat. I, it may seem mundane and it may seem like, oh, it's so much work and it's a headache. I don't feel like it. Your child, grow up. Sorry. Grow up. Like, Start logging what you're eating. Realize what you're eating and how much of what you're eating. And then... Typically off of that, you'll see what you need to cut out and what you need to replace. 
all my clients go through it the first week they sign up and then i make them aware by the first consultation we i make them aware it's like okay you ate this on this day this was this many grams of this you made this like this too much fat in here blah 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 blah. this is not good for you x y and z and then they're like oh my god oh my god it's like i don't you're taking everything from me and then i give them replacements i give them what they need that's best for them because they're all of my clients get custom everything so it's like i'm not just giving you a general whatever here's what i know you like here's what you should replace it with here's a healthier option blah blah blah, blah you know to stop the crying but it's it's really that simple y'all now a lot of people are unfamiliar with tracking their calories tracking their macros you know trying to expend x amount of energy a day trying to make sure that you know you're going fast there's no solid foods for a little while to reset the stomach and blah blah all that. a lot of people don't know about that they just see the results they see my clients they see how fast oh they lost like 40 50 pounds in third in three months oh this person was working out with you and they only see like the working outside and they think oh i just got to work out which plays a big part especially resistance training that in high interval intensity uh high intensity interval training that also helps with like boosting your metabolism um your muscles needed to feed on something so they're gonna go for the fat first you know like your body actually eating all the things that it needs to and disposing of things that it needs to to start building muscle to grow to get lean to get sharp all those type of things but what they don't see is me chewing them out for 30 minutes in our consultation because for two weeks straight you really can't put a debbie cake down you could eat more fruits but you can't put a debbie cake down for one day i'm not even actually just totally get rid of it the first week just let's just go one day without it just give just give me a half just just take half of it and you know what i see on their fitness pal log thing it just be all over the place same thing same thing same thing or they try to lie about it and a whole month go by and i'm like you ain't lost not a bit of weight and you don't have no underlying or previous medical previously existing medical condition so that tells me one of three things you're lying in your logs you're either lying in your logs or you really got a, a medical condition that we don't know about but most of my clients get screened before they even start with me you know so that's just that's just where i'm at with that if you want to start if you're looking for a guide if you're looking for this that and the third start watching what you're eating like oftentimes tell this to people the front is for entertainment the back is for education when was the last time you turned a product that you was buying around and you looked at it and you understood what was in there when was the last time you did that most people don't most people genuinely do not and then whenever they start researching it oh that's this oh that's that that's in this what a prime example excuse me a prime example you go to get a fruit juice or whatever it is that in the third and then you turn it around if i'm getting grapefruit juice if i'm getting apple juice if i'm getting whatever type of fruit juice the only ingredient in there should be the fruit that it came from it should be the only ingredient i don't want to see cane uh, sugar i don't want to see high fructose corn syrup i don't want to see dye i don't want to see all this other type of high concentrated oh, from concentrate from blah 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 why why and once you really start asking yourself those questions once you really just start waking up not only will you save money that's another thing too whenever you eat better you start to save some money people are like eating health is expensive no you just go for the stuff that tries to satiate you the same as the bad stuff did and you honestly ain't letting go of the bad stuff so you eating you in two different worlds you're still eating for the bad while trying to eat for the good and I oftentimes tell people come to the good side omit and replace omit and replace i'm not saying leave everything alone and you ain't got nothing to replace it with y'all there's just I promise y'all, there's so many healthy things that taste just as good, if not better, than the bad stuff that we eat. I kid you not. And just because it's natural doesn't mean that it's bad. I hate the story of like, oh my God, all these fruits y'all eating is so bad for your blood sugar and blah, 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 blah. And we didn't had to talk about monosaccharides, poly, and disaccharides. And that does not digest the same. That does not hit the system the same. One, your body can actually process and knows what to do with it. The other requires immense amount of cortisol from the adrenal glands that fatigue the adrenal glands that's tied to the kidneys that's that slows slows down or um weakens the filtration system of the blood which messes with the pancreas which messes with the liver the, I, the list goes on it goes on and on and on so please miss me with that because you have people that are like real life for real plant-based and fruitarians and they not bro not only do they look good they're healthy you know are some on supplementations here and there maybe maybe not but i've me personally i've gone months without meat and process and this that and the third and i'm talking about what's feeling amazing do i eat my do i eat meat now yes not a lot of it but i do but at the same time i've been on every side of the diet spectrum i've tried it all out and not just oh i did it for a little week no i did it for months for a while people will see me come around oh we can't have this because he coming around you're right y'all can eat it i'm not eating that I'll, come, I'll even come sit with you at buffalo wild wings i ain't eating nothing no i'll come there fed but 
that's the things we got to start doing. That's the approaches we have to start doing to really realize that once you really for real about this stuff and you start sourcing better, better like we talked about before and you start eating better, a lot of these things start to go away. They had a guy, ooh, prime example. I wish I could remember his name. There was a guy, I posted my video about like diet choice and superfoods and dietary switches and stuff like that. And and I already had this claim, you know, it's like if you already have a preconceiving, preconceiving uh, medical condition and blah, 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 this doesn't apply to you. This is for people that's just trying to switch in X, Y, and Z. He was like, oh my God, you know, most people have this problem and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just sitting here like, I understand that people come into the, this game and try to switch. And most of the switches are because of the medical conditions. I understand that. But for the people that's not, this is for them. And immensely what I was saying was like, if you're going to switch, switch for real. And then when you really switch and when you really start eating right, like I said before and I said again, you shouldn't be plant-based or alkaline or healthy or whatever and still be 300 pounds of visceral fat sky, sky high, the all the doggone sub, uh, subcutaneous fat is sky high, your protein levels, your muscle mass is, is horrible, your skeletal muscle, uh, muscle is horrible, you can't walk up and down the stairs, but you're plant-based, but you're vegan, makes a no sense makes no sense even if you're not somebody that exercises the moment you start to truly eat better you should be able to do something more physically than, that you couldn't do before and i'm not even being specific about what you're eating i'm just talking about just a better diet in general and most people just don't under i don't know why people have a hard time understanding that it's like just because they say it's good for you doesn't mean that you shouldn't have to check into it for yourself or you shouldn't have to do the research why is it that they know more about your body than you do and this is a serious question why is it that you don't even take the time to figure out how your body works, what's best for you, what's healthy for you, before you go running with somebody else's information? When the last time you checked your blood type? When the last time you checked to see the quality of your blood in the full panel screening? What's the last time you checked the functions on your bodies on the inside, but you just assuming because, oh, well, this is good for blah, blah, you should go take it. Yeah, but where your levels at in your body? I, like prime example one of my clients and y'all know who i'm talking about but i ain't gonna put out like that unless she wants me to i don't like just giving information like that with they, people well people's names like that if she's up in here and she know i'm talking about it she'll raise her hand and i'll i'll acknowledge it like that but one of my clients did a, a panel screening like maybe two weeks to a month ago and the whole protocol switched because we was doing some stuff and i'm just sitting there like this not adding up i was like something not adding up i said you're losing weight you're getting better but it's, it's the rate is it's stagnant found out LDL levels is all over the place. Her body isn't processing sugar the right way, you know, and then we were changing the diet over here. Like she's low in this mineral and that mineral. I was like, all right, cool. So we switched the herbs up. We switched the diet up. We switched all that type of stuff up. And next thing you know, weight start falling off. Energy start coming back. Sleep's getting better. A lot of illness is falling off. And that was within one month. One month. Which normally takes people three to six months, almost a year to heal from stuff like that. I'm not saying I got all the answers. I'm not saying the doctors have all the answers. But what I'm saying is you see what happens whenever you apply the effort. You see what happens when you do your research. You see what happens when you dive into yourself. Nobody should know more about you than you. Nobody. Exactly. Especially what was going on inside your blood and what was going on inside your body and what's going on inside your mind. That's nothing that's important too. Where are you mentally? Are you even in a place to where you can even try to give some type of fortitude to grab a hold of a new discipline? Something that can actually benefit you. When was the last time you looked around and was like, okay, this benefits me, this doesn't benefit me. This is doing well for me, this is draining me of my joy. This is this is adding money to my pocket, this is a very bad expensive habit. When was the last time y'all did that? Because switching, when it comes out to diet and lifestyle, it's a lot more than just losing weight. I get it. Nobody wants to be, even though they say there's no such thing as uh, fat, uh, I don't know, uh, people are fat phobic and there's no such thing as you know, being fat is wrong, blah, 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 blah. I hear it. I know everybody wants to be inclusive. I know everybody wants to accept everybody for X, Y, and Z. But let's be honest. You get to a certain part in your body to where you're just unhealthy. It is what, and I love me a thick girl. I, I love my, my beautiful, 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 beautiful people. Let me tell y'all something. I'm not saying don't love your body. I'm not saying don't love who you are. But be real with yourself. Be real with yourself. You have to understand that at some point, you are just not healthy. And you can be don't you can be big and beautiful. There's a lot of big women out there that is immaculately beautiful, but they have heart problems. But they can't they get out of breath getting up and down. And and that's not to shame nobody. That's the thing. People think just because you're calling out truth that you're trying to shame and demoralize and 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 make people self conscious. No, what we need to do is make health real again, make wellness real again. Once again, not saying that you can you can be big and unhealthy. I mean, you can't be big and healthy at the same time. I'm not saying that. But y'all know when too far is too far. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. And then we glorify it. 
That's what I hate about the Western culture. My 300 pound life, my 600 pound life. People don't need to be enamored by that. I understand awareness, but it's like, no, we need to promote my healthy life, my dietary life, my active life. If there was to put as many blue zone episodes and healthy episodes in front of people's faces and transformation videos as far as like health not even just weight but health in general the world would be a lot better place it would be a, it, people would be influenced if we start glorifying the people that's actually healing and doing what they have to do the world would be totally different and once again i'm not trying to shame nobody i'm not y'all know me i'm nice i got love for everybody but i gotta call a spade a spade and i gotta tell the truth there is no reason why you should be walking around here 300 some pounds full of diseases and full of illnesses and X, Y, and Z and think, oh, body positivity. I'm not saying don't love yourself. I'm not saying don't be, I'm not saying don't find something to love about yourself because everybody's beautiful in some way, shape, or form. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It's the, I, I hate comparison to begin with, but in actuality, in fact, in real life, when it comes out to real life, you're going to have problems. Especially if you have a high level of visceral fat around, which is the fat in your abdominal area, but that's around like your organs and stuff like that. You're going to have a problem. You're going to have the diabetes. You're going to have like people don't even understand like all of like diabetes and stuff like that. That's metabolic problems as well. Your body can't break down certain carbohydrates because your pancreas is too weak. What do you think excessive weight does to the joints? What do you think excessive weight does to your eyesight, your circulation, X, Y, and Z? We talked about blood quality not too long ago gotta tap in y'all we gotta do better we have to do better and i know some of y'all like oh you little skinny little nigga when the when the when the you out here saying x y and z you ain't never been big you don't know what it's like but i know wellness and i've had a lot of clients who were big and got smaller you're right i've been pretty small my whole life but i'm tall i'm naturally lean and i've actually been gaining weight throughout the time and i know what it feels like to be 40 pounds heavier than before I gained so much weight the past few years just trying to, trying to, and it feels immensely different. Like, I could run a mile in four minutes. That four minute mile feels completely different than it did last year at the current weight that I'm at right now, which doesn't, once again, like I'm saying, I don't, I shouldn't have to be big to understand or to let you know that being big with those problems is a problem. We need to stop with the excuses. We really do. I didn't come on here to bash nobody. I didn't come on here to be evil. I know it's going to hurt some feelings. I know people are not going to like me. That's fine. But a spade is a spade. The truth is the truth. Because even I even called myself out whenever I was younger. Y'all y'all know my story. Eating horribly. Not doing the best. Stomach problems. All that type of stuff. I had to call myself out. I'm not about to sit here and try to slash somebody and I ain't slashed myself before. That's hypocritical. And that's one thing that I'm not. But I'm leading with love and I got to leave with truth, y'all. I have to. I can't be out there saying I'm holistic wellness and weight loss. Let, prime example. Would y'all even follow me? Would y'all even be on this this live and tuning in and following in the content? And I say, oh, I'm a wellness and weight loss specialist, but I'm out here 300 something pounds with a gut. Breath stink, mussy, sweaty. I'm, and y'all, and uh, you got to eat your herbs. You got to, come on now. Y'all serious? Y'all, 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 you see what I'm saying? And that's, that's the real life that I need people to wake back up to. There's a reason why our elders and our ancestors had so so many high levels of testosterone, and it was out here like fully like in shape. They didn't have as many health. Now, granted, the food has changed. Don't get me wrong, food and all that stuff has changed, but we still have the capability to go out and be healthy and do better for ourselves. It's no excuse. It's no excuse. I'm just gonna say that. But I'm answering a few more questions. I'm getting up out of here because I'm starting to rant. I don't like ranting. I like answering questions. Um, let's see. Hey, family, what's the most holistic way to gain weight? My high metabolism. No one has a serious answer being a childhood cancer survivor. Let me tell you something. You looking at you looking at the I used to be stuck at 135. Picture me being 25 years old, six feet tall at 135 pounds. Yeah, bro, I, I totally understand where you come from, but you know what I did? And it's crazy. If you even go look at my transformation videos down uh, in, on my page, a lot of them transformation videos that I had. Whenever I especially I gained like them 20 plus pounds, I got to like, I think I was like at 178, I want to say, because right now I'm almost at like 180. But like, and which is big for me because I've always been small. I wasn't even eating meat around that time. I was just doing a lot of weight resistant training and I was just eating within my macros. I was making sure that I was getting adequate, adequate amounts of carbs, proteins, fats, and I just did what I had to do. And you know what's the crazy part? I didn't, I didn't clean out my stomach so much to the point now to where it's like I'm, I can still grow more muscle and put on mass with a one meal a day. Like, it, it, it happens like that. 
once you get to that level you can just start doing that but i mean you have to start tracking you have to start if you want to grow you got to start feeding yourself with things that's going that's going to help you grow you have to start putting things within you and, and, and guess what sometimes we just got high metabolism that's just crazy high like that because let me stop doing what i'm doing now to associate try to like keep gaining weight x y and z i'm gonna start it's, it does not take me much to lose weight even if i'm not running and i run a lot it does not take me much to lose weight i feel your pain i feel your struggle but guess what it's possible it's possible to put that weight on i'm getting thick you better watch out <laughs> let me see i need you to coach my teenager where do i go just direct message me or you can set you can go to my um the link in my bio and you'll see like you'll say schedule a consultation or like the one-on-one coaching and stuff like that i do consultations before i let people in my program i don't just put a link to where i can go pay and y'all sign up because not everybody i don't like working with everybody like i'm just be honest with y'all i want to work with the majority of y'all that would be very nice but some people i can tell in the first consultation they just don't have it they just don't have it and like they just they're just doing it just because and i and i'll try i sometimes i even give them a chance but i don't like people wasting their money and i don't like wasting my time point blank period the last thing i want to see is like a month later is like well it didn't work blah blah and i and i knew you was you know you could just tell some people built for it some people not but slide through i got y'all let's see i agree just be real i didn't take care of my teeth now i've gotten dentures at 59 so please listen to my man he speaks the truth and what i have to say is brush your teeth so you won't have to wear dentures like i do because they suck definitely so also oil pool coconut oil and clove oil I I have I used to I have, and I don't even eat candy like that. I had a cavity come about years ago, and I started oil pulling, reversed it. Started flossing more, brushing more, reversed it. And it's, she's not capping, y'all. Like really start doing that, really start oil pulling. People are like, well, y'all y'all talking about pseudoscience and it ain't working. Blah blah blah. It worked for me. It worked for the other people that I saw it work for. It works for the people that's in the research files. So uh, you could take that how you want to take that. We know it worked, and it's gonna work. Which hand is best in holding cup while drinking tea? I'm left-handed. I always use the left hand. Left side, strong side. I have to message you and start your program. Thanks. Most definitely. Come on over. Come on over. I actually just did a cut in my uh, pricing for a Christmas, well, the holiday special, but I think I'm actually keeping that low because I'm noticing a lot more. I'm noticing a lot more people starting to come in, and I'm seeing a lot more benefits, and I just I just want I want to help people. So come on through. All right, y'all. That was my last question. Love y'all. I'm out. One one thing before I do go out though, if y'all want to sign up with my program, link in my bio, one on one coaching. Also, if y'all want to get a quick guide on detoxification, oh, and I got some new protocols coming out. I can't wait to give them to y'all. But I do have currently still have my ten day and my seven day detox up in my shop. Um, you can hit the um, get the link in my bio, or you can just go to coachbrian.com. Shout out to y'all that's been buying the hoodies too. I personally forgot we even had merch on the site. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't. I I haven't even pr- promoted mo- merch and. God knows how long. But shout out to y'all. I've been seeing y'all buying hoodies. Somebody in New Jersey got one. Somebody in Cali got one. Shout out to y'all. I appreciate y'all. But continue to like and share. Continue to follow. Make sure y'all hit that follow. But don't come up in here and don't follow me. Just let, just let me add. Just, you know, just add me to your stuff and just keep scrolling. You know, just get my followers up there. You feel me? But other than that, appreciate y'all. Love y'all. And y'all have a great, great, great day.